Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Danny, and you're watching Dragonairs Club. So this is Jumping Spiders Part 3. We're going to be looking to cover a range of different topics, all from feeding your spider to handling your spider, getting them out and actually playing with them. If I sound quite hoarse through this video, I do apologise. I've got a bit of a sore throat and tested positive for COVID this week, so um, fun. <laughs> Um, but yeah, anyway, hope you enjoy the content and let's get into it. Okay, so let's kick things off by discussing feeding your new jumping spider. So we're going to be talking about both slings and adults as they both require different food items. A sling is the terminology used to discuss a baby spider and slings typically require much smaller food items. We're talking fruit flies and curly winged flies. Those will typically be the two main food sources that you're going to feed your sling. When it comes to sub-adult and adult jumping spiders, we're going to be feeding them much larger food items. So we're going to be looking at feeding blue bottles, green bottles, silkworms, moths as well are an excellent one. If you have wax worms, leave them to pupate. They'll turn into moths and that's an excellent food source as well for your jumping spider. The occasional treat is also fine, I'm talking wax worms and mealworms too. When your spider is shedding, it can be very wise to wait until they're completely out of the nest and behaving as normal before you start feeding them again. Generally this is because when a spider has just shed, they are very vulnerable. Their exoskeleton requires time in order to harden and so do their fangs. If a freshly shed spider starts hunting and is successful, it may well damage its fangs and unfortunately this may result in death. If you have any doubts in regards to whether or not to feed your jumping spider, a foolproof way of doing this is to simply look at the spider's abdomen. Does it look thin or does it look rotund? If it's somewhere in the middle, then the spider is probably fine. It's important to take note though, that a spider that's very very thin and not eating may well be suffering from dehydration. It is very important not to feed a spider that already looks very rotund, as this can potentially lead to a rupture of the abdomen, and unfortunately this will also incur death. Okay, so taking a look at the jumping spider. Jumping spiders make up a family of more than 6,000 species and account for 13% of spiders worldwide. So if you're planning to catch them all, good luck. Collectively, the family is called Salticidae, which means a family of small spiders that stalk and hunt. What makes the jumping spider so unique is their ability to plan prior to hunting, despite the fact that their brains are the size of a sesame seed. In fact, New studies have shown how jumping spiders plan out intricate routes and plan detours to reach prey. They have what's known as an abstract working memory, which is usually only seen in much larger animals. To add to this, jumping spiders also have the best vision of any arachnid. They have eight eyes, much like other species, but have an exceptional visual acuity. At the front of the spider sits two large principal eyes, which have incredibly high resolution. Their sight is sharper than any other known spiders and is comparable to that of a cat or an elephant. To put this into perspective, a human's visual acuity is only 5 to 10 times better than that of a jumping spider. These spiders can jump up to 50 times their own body length. They can jump such long distances by changing the fluid pressure and storing elastic energy in their legs. As previously stated, there are over 6,000 different jumping spider species, with very few looking similar. Each of these sports a different colour, size and personality. To tell a male from a female when the spiders are young can be tricky. Certain breeds such as the Regal are typically easier from an early age, as the females tend to sport orange markings and the males white. Generally speaking, waiting until the spiders have matured slightly is the only guaranteed way. You can tell if the spider is at an adult stage once the sex organs and pedipalps of the spider have fully developed. Footage above shows the shape of the male's pedipalps, which are very thick and comma-like. If the spider has a clear epigone between its book lungs, then it is 100% a female.
Okay, so let's move on to the next topic, handling, respecting and forming a bond with our jumping spider. So if you're new to owning a jumping spider, one of the biggest concerns you likely have is whether or not your spider will or may bite you. So jumping spiders are not naturally aggressive creatures, they don't come out looking to harm you. They will simply only bite you if you give them a good reason to. For instance, if they feel threatened by you, if they feel as though you're going to harm it, then it may well bite you, yes. But generally speaking, jumping spiders are very good at letting you know when they do not wish to be handled. They will bare their fangs and they may well raise their front legs as well. This is otherwise known as a threat posture. If you see this, just simply leave your spider alone and no injury will occur. Moment. She wants to come out. There we go, there she is. There we go. There she is, that's my sweet baby Hira. Hi baby. Hi. I just love her. I think it's very fair to say that no two jumping spiders appear to be the same. They've all got their very unique personalities. Some are much more shy and timid and do not wish to be handled or come out of the enclosure. Others of them, like Hera, love to be handled. They love to come out, they love to play, and they like to explore different plants and different areas that they can use as a playground, and it can be very fun to watch. All in all, I think jumping spiders do make wonderful little pets. Whether or not you have one with a big personality, or one that's very quiet by nature, they all carry something that makes them ultimately very unique. And I can confidently say, hand on heart, they'll be looking to own these little jumpers for a very long time. In regards to the jumping spider content I've created thus far on this channel, if there is any potential arachnophobes watching this content, then I hope that what I have created so far is enough to potentially even leave just the smallest jumping spider sized hole in your heart. This marks the end of video 3 and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Take care guys and see you on the next one. Bye!